Welcome to the Single Valve Steam Turbine Governor demonstration video. This video is intended to inform you about the built-in functionalities of this pre-engineered solution developed by Rockwell Automation. It's been designed to leverage your current installed inventory, which in turn can reduce your total cost of ownership. Now, here is our application expert who will provide additional details about our Single Valve Steam Turbine Governor. This is the Single Valve Steam Turbine Governor. It's a uh, configurable product from Rockwell Automation that's intended to make it very easy to retrofit the governor functions on a steam turbine. Uh, it handles single valve steam turbines. It comes in a, a several different configurations for cases and HMIs. And it uh, is based on standard Rockwell technology for um, programmable automation controllers. This is the opening screen that you would see when you look at the front of the single valve steam turbine uh, governor. The first screen that you have here allows you to sign on with up to five different uh, sign-on IDs. The highest level of access is the engineering level. The lowest would be just operate, which would let you go through the screens. Um, and then there's different levels through there for maintenance and other individuals as well. Um, as we move through the operating screens, what you'll see here is the startup sequence display. This shows you exactly where you're at in the startup sequence. So if you start the steam turbine and there's a difficulty with the startup, either with an interlock, a permissive, or a trip, this screen will show you exactly where you're at in the startup sequence, and it'll also give you information on exactly where you need to go to clear the problem that you have. So this screen gives the operator a great deal of information about his current operations. The speed PID is the one that actually controls the steam turbine speed. On this screen you see everything about the speed PID that you would normally need during normal operations. It allows uh, you to go in and make changes to uh, set points for speed if you're actually controlling it directly. Um, if the speed is being uh, driven by a remote set point, this remote set point would be coming in and should be shown on this particular display. The startup sequence can uh, be configured for a cold or a, a not cold or a warm start. It'll let you also bypass and substitute a thermal condition if you're doing a restart and you don't want to wait for a long thermal warm-up cycle. The speed target for uh, cold and not cold or warm starts gives you an idea of where the particular uh, idle speeds are and uh, where they're at in your startup sequence. In the next screen you'll actually see how long you'll spend in each of those particular um, zones. So as you get into a cold or not cold uh, startup, you can have different times that you spend in each of the idle zones. Operating time gives you uh, an indication of how long the turbine has been running how long it's spent in the startup mode, and how long it's been shut down. This is, this is useful information for uh, determining when maintenance needs to be done on your turbine. If we come up and take a look at the maintenance screens, that's the little wrench that you see up here. When you press the wrench there, it brings you up to the configuration, hardware, and uh, device operations and settings page. This particular page allows you to do the uh, configuration parameters, the interlocks, uh, and the permissives. It also lets you look at the hardware diagnostics. The device and settings uh, window down here will let you choose and look at particular individual items if you're interested in looking at something specific in the configuration. Changes are made from the parameters page when you have adequate clearance in the engineer mode, for example. When you come into the actual recipe, which is where the uh, menu configuration is, you can actually read what's in the controller and then take a look at the information that's available on the particular configuration as it stands or, or currently being used. This information then can be saved to the HMI, it can be downloaded to the controller, it can be uploaded from the controller, and all of those uh, points would be shown on the particular menu. As you move through the menu, you see the different configuration items for the turbine. Each of those can be configured for your particular installation. From the interlock page, you can see configurable interlocks that you can configure to make the operation of your turbine uh, safer and fit your particular process. If you don't have these particular um, interlocks or trips, you don't configure them and they won't interfere with your operation. When you come into the permissives, 
The permissives are there to um, place certain inhibits or allow the turbine to be started if certain alarms are not present. You configure the permissives from the screen here. Again, if you don't use them or don't have them in your installation, you don't configure them and they don't interfere with anything. Hardware diagnostics are on the hardware screen. And from the hardware screen, you can go through the particular hardware that's installed. You can pull up uh, the diagnostics and in individual points on the governor. You can see what the uh, current diagnostics are showing. Now, as we take a look um, back in the operation uh, screens, when you're in running, this is the alarm page. So as you look at the alarms, you'll see the 128 most recent alarms that have occurred. They're kept in a circular queue within the governor, so you can go back in time. Each alarm has the time of the event recorded along with it. The page with the triangle are the warnings. These display a particular warnings or anything that's going to be preventing you from starting the turbine. And in this instance, it's waiting for a reset from the operator before it'll allow the turbine to be restarted. The trend screens will allow you to pull up individual trends of some of the analog data, in this case, the speed PID. This will show you um, all the information about that particular PID. These types of trends are not meant to be historical. They're five or 10 minutes in length, but they're very, very useful for doing loop tuning on the particular uh, PID that you're working with. The interlock page will actually show you the current interlocks. These interlocks would be the ones that may be preventing you from starting. This is an interlock from a, uh, a previous trip, and I can't start the turbine until that cl is cleared by acknowledging and resetting the previous alarm. Permissives are on the permissives page, and these permissives have to be met before you can actually uh, institute a start to bring the turbine up to speed. Again, the, if you don't use these, you don't configure them. We have online help available on the screen. The help screens give definitions of the particular symbols that are used, where they're used, and what the definitions of the symbols are. So there's very, very good online help available. For more information or to order the single valve steam turbine governor, please contact your local Allen Bradley distributor or sales office.